Am I the antagonist for letting my sister think all of her babysitting parents will spoil her the way mine does? I am a babysitter to a 10-year-old girl with cancer. It is by far the easiest and cushiest job I've ever had. When Ava is in the hospital, she's either napping or playing with friends. All I have to do is make her lunch, help her with her homework, push her IV pole when she walks, and assist her with using the bathroom. Helping her on and off the toilet, she can do the rest. When she's not in the hospital, we have a lot of fun. Her mom allows me to take her anywhere or do anything with her as long as she returns safely. There's no budget, and I get reimbursed for everything. We visited arcades, amusement parks, gone ice skating, watched movies, visited museums, and so much more. I genuinely enjoy spending time with her. Additionally, her mom spoils me. Every morning when I arrive at work, she asks if I've eaten. If I haven't, she gives me $20 for breakfast and coffee. When I babysit at night, she gives me $50 for DoorDash food in case I get hungry, and if I don't use it, she considers it a bonus. This is in addition to having access to the pantry. When my suitcase was lost after a two-week vacation, Ava's mom gave me $150 to buy clothes until my suitcase was found. I accompany the family on three trips a year and receive an all-expenses-paid trip to work two five hours a day, paid at 1.5x my normal rate, so that Ava's mom can spend time with her other children while Ava rests. I shared all the details of this job with my sister, who recently lost her job and decided to start babysitting. She has a five-year-old girl and an eight-year-old boy and is not enjoying it. She earns less than me, takes care of more children with more energy, doesn't receive money for food during babysitting, can't take the kids out, doesn't get phone time, and the parents aren't as kind as Ava's mom. She believes I made her think all babysitting jobs would be as easy as mine by constantly talking about it, and she blames me for her dissatisfaction with her job. Our mom believes I should have warned her that not all families are like Ava's and that it can be challenging. Am I the a-hole for not cautioning her that not all jobs are like mine and that she would actually have to work if she took a babysitting job? First of all, let me commend you for the care and attention you are providing to Ava during this difficult time. It's wonderful to hear about the special bond you have with her and the support you receive from her family. While it's understandable that your sister may be feeling overwhelmed in her babysitting role, it's not fair for her to blame you for her dissatisfaction. Different families have different dynamics and needs, and it seems like you have been fortunate to have landed in a particularly supportive and rewarding situation. It might be helpful to have an open conversation with your sister about the challenges she is facing and offer support and advice to help her navigate her role more effectively. However, ultimately, it is not your responsibility to warn her about the potential difficulties of babysitting in general. Each job is unique, and it sounds like you are doing a great job in your current position. It's important for your sister to find her own way in her babysitting role and not compare her experiences to yours. In conclusion, you are not the a-hole for not cautioning your sister about the differences in babysitting jobs. Keep up the great work with Ava, and maybe offer your sister some tips to improve her own situation. Am I the antagonist if I ignore my sibling's fiancé on their wedding day and pretend that they are marrying a ghost? So last year my sister's, 32 years old, female boyfriend, 42 years old male, sent me, 23 years old, male, drunk texts, testing the waters to see if I would flirt back. He claimed to miss me in an inappropriate way. I tried giving him the benefit of the doubt by saying that maybe he doesn't mean this behavior in an inappropriate way, but then he doubled down by saying he did maybe mean it in an inappropriate way. He then went on about how he loved my hair, I smelled nice, etc. I was very uncomfortable. He sent me a text the next day saying he was sorry because he was drunk, but I said nothing back. Him being drunk is nothing new. He is an alcoholic, even openly drinking while driving. Him being sober would be surprising. Plus I stayed over their house just for one day and he drunkenly texted me this stuff at night three days later. So it wasn't like he got drunk the same night or the day after. This was on his mind days later. I told my sister what happened privately in person. She said that this truly blindsided her as she thought that this month was actually going pretty great for their relationship. We looked at the timestamp of when he texted me that night, and apparently he texted me that he missed me inappropriately while my sister was in the next room. My sister was obviously heartbroken and started crying. She said that she doesn't think it's cheating and neither do I, but it's definitely suspicious and weird. She told me that she won't bring it up that she knows about his drunk texts, but that she will mentally distance herself and slowly save up to eventually move out. The next morning, my sister changed her mind. She talked with her boyfriend, and she said that they worked it out. But she clarified that I shouldn't worry because she doesn't believe everything he said. She just wants him to know that she knows. She said, I guessed what his motivation for texting you was, that he also didn't mean it like that. But I read the texts, and they were very inappropriate, and I respect your decision. We are on good terms, but I have my eyes open and my heart protected. I got annoyed and said, What do you mean by keeping your eyes open and heart protected? That means that you're going to second guess everything he's going to do now. Are you really in love with him or are you just afraid of being alone? She then said, I really do love him. I don't want to throw away five years over some texts. We didn't talk much after that until recently they decided to get married. I will attend the wedding, but I won't pretend to be happy. 
I won't frown or look mad in his direction, I will just ignore his existence. She claimed that I'm overreacting, that I shouldn't take some text messages so seriously as he never did anything like that to me after that. Which is true, he never talked to me after that. She added that I should be there to support her on her big day. I said that I will support her. I will just ignore that he exists. I will pretend that she is marrying a ghost. She called me an asshole. Am I the asshole? While humor can sometimes lighten a serious situation, it's important to address this matter with sensitivity and care. It's clear that you were put in a very uncomfortable position by your sister's boyfriend's inappropriate drunk texts. It's understandable that you felt the need to confide in your sister about what happened. Your sister's reaction seems to be conflicted and complex, which is not surprising given the circumstances. It's concerning that her boyfriend's behavior persisted even when she was in the next room and that he has a history of alcohol abuse. It's positive that they had a conversation about it. But it's also important for your sister to prioritize her own well-being and boundaries in this situation. Attending the wedding while feeling uncomfortable around her boyfriend is a tough situation to navigate. Your feelings are valid, and it's completely understandable that you may find it challenging to show support while also feeling uncomfortable or conflicted about the relationship. In this situation, it seems more important to prioritize open communication and honesty, both with your sister and with yourself. It might be beneficial to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with your sister about your feelings and concerns, ensuring that your boundaries and well-being are respected. Ultimately, you're not the asshole for feeling the way you do, but finding a balance between supporting your sister and honoring your own feelings is key. Am I the antagonist for telling my sister-in-law that she was extremely harsh by kicking my mother out of my brother's hospital room while he was critically injured? This actually happened back in October, but it's just recently flared up. My, 33-year-old male, little brother Sam, 26-year-old male, was very badly injured in a car crash and in a coma. It didn't look like he was going to make it the first several days and still uncertain weeks afterwards. During this time, our mother, 61-year-old female, suggested to us that we should freeze his sperm so his wife Emma, 27-year-old female, could get pregnant if the worst happens. Everyone was disturbed by that comment, I admit it, for obvious reasons. I talked to her at the time and told her not to bring it up because it's very inappropriate to be thinking about creating future children while he was dying, but she found it a perfectly legitimate concern but agreed to shut up nonetheless. Again she brought it up and asked if Emma had come to a decision about that. Emma got rightfully upset and told her to leave and not come back. I supported her then but didn't think she would keep her out for weeks, about 11 days. I told Emma then that she'd learned her lesson and that keeping her away from Sam when he could die at any moment was unthinkable to me despite whatever she'd said. She defended her decision but relented when I promised on behalf of my mom that she wouldn't bring it up again. I then made my mom promise to me that she wouldn't say anything like that again, and even though she was outraged and very hurt at Emma, she apologized to her and we thought that was over. Fast forward to now. Sam has recovered a lot, but he still needs a lot of rehabilitation and has quite a few cognitive difficulties still. I thought my mom and Emma had moved past their issue, but it turns out my mom is still holding on to resentment because she keeps thinking that Sam could have died without her ever saying goodbye to him because of Emma. This came out again when Emma recently confronted her about why she's been so off with her and my mom told her everything. My mom was crying that she'll never forgive her and Emma was saying she won't have to because she won't even apologize. Emma then told her that I agreed with her. I corrected her and said I agreed with her initial decision but was always clear that letting it go on for weeks was a horrible thing to do. I was definitely more forceful than I was when I'd first told her because I'd tried to be gentle with her then. Emma is distraught is because nobody is taking her side. Sam himself has come to find out about this through our sister and is upset with me because he thinks I should have tried to defuse the fight instead of egging my mom on. I'm so conflicted because I definitely don't want to strain our family even more at this time. But if I tried, I think I could get them to see eye to eye because I'm generally regarded as a peacemaker in my family. But if I were to do that, I'd have to be diplomatic and say stuff like I see both sides when I unequivocally dislike what Emma did. First of all, I must say, your family seems to be the cast of a soap opera. The drama is real. Now, joking aside, in situations like these, tensions run high and emotions are all over the place. Your mom suggesting freezing your brother's sperm while he was in a coma is indeed a bit out there. Emma's reaction to this was completely understandable, and her decision to keep your mom away initially was probably her way of setting a clear boundary. You trying to mediate between them makes sense, but at some point you have to draw the line. Your brother Sam may be upset now, but with time, he may understand the complexities of the situation. Being the peacemaker in the family can be tough, especially when you have to navigate through such intense emotions. Just remember, it's okay to stand your ground and express your true feelings, even if it means not everyone will agree with you. Good luck bringing peace to your family circus. Am I the antagonist for returning gifts to my family and asking them to leave after they insulted my daughter's name? I, 26 years old female, gave birth to my first child three weeks ago. My daughter and my family are not happy with the name I chose. My parents and siblings had wanted me to name my daughter Agatha or Agnes because those are family names 
and part of a theme my family keeps, where the oldest girl and the youngest girl pass the initials of their names to their children. Because my name also begins with an A, they had wanted me to do the same as the youngest. My oldest sister followed the tradition. My mother's oldest and youngest sisters did, my cousins did it. But my husband and I did not want to follow the tradition, and we didn't want a classic name for our baby anyway. We chose the name Indy for our daughter. I had told my family during my pregnancy that I was not using Agatha or Agnes, or a name that starts with an A for my baby. I had mentioned this more than once. For some reason, they decided Agatha would be the name. When my daughter was born and my family came to visit us at the hospital, I had a C-section and was in the hospital for a few days afterward, they were shocked by the name we chose. They asked me what I was thinking, going for a name like that, and then told me I had broken the tradition for some weird name that doesn't make sense. My husband asked them to leave the hospital if they couldn't keep their opinions to themselves. They apologized, which I believed was sincere, and they came to our house with gifts. But when I saw the gifts I noticed that anything personalized had the name Agatha on it. When I asked about it, they told me Agatha was a much better name and surely I didn't want my daughter to have a dumb modern name like Indy. My mom told me she could not understand me picking such a hideous name, and she said my husband and most of my friends had set bad examples with their names, but I should stick to classics because they are classic for a reason. She told me they would never be able to accept the name Indy in the family. I returned all the gifts to their packaging and returned them to my family before asking them to leave. I told them they did not get to insult my daughter's name again and pushed so hard for us to change the name we as her parents had decided on. My recovery from surgery has been slow, so my husband was the one to make sure they actually left. But they were upset that I was responding to them like I was. They told me I should have been more honest about the name earlier and I was punishing them for thinking more of my daughter than my husband and I were. I do feel bad for returning the gifts and kicking them out, and the number of texts they have sent since tells me they don't like it either. But am I the asshole? Am I the antagonist? First of all, congratulations on the birth of your daughter, Indy. It's a beautiful name, unique and full of character, just like her, I'm sure. It's important for parents to choose a name that resonates with them and reflects their individuality and values, so kudos to you and your husband for sticking to your guns. As for your family's reaction, it's understandable that they may have had certain expectations based on tradition, but ultimately, the decision of what to name your child lies with you as the parents. It's not fair for them to pressure you to conform to their naming conventions, especially when you had clearly communicated your preferences beforehand. Returning the personalized gifts and asking them to leave may have seemed like a drastic measure, but it was a necessary one to assert your boundaries and defend your daughter's name. It's important to stand up for your choices as a parent and not let others undermine your decisions. In conclusion, no, you are not the asshole in this situation. You have the right to name your child as you see fit, and your family should respect that. Hopefully, with time, they will come to appreciate and accept the name you have chosen for your daughter. And hey, at least there won't be any mix-ups at family gatherings with all those Agathas and Agnesies around, right? Am I the antagonist for refusing to apologize to my stepsister for something that happened 12 years ago? 13, 14 years ago, my widowered father met my widowed stepmother, and they fell in love with each other. I was six when I met my stepmother and stepsister, but I was eight before they got married. My stepsister was two when I met her and four, when she became my stepsister for real. Like a lot of parents, my father and stepmother didn't handle the beginning of the process that well, and I was really upset and angry, and I struggled. I told dad to break up with my stepmother, and I told her I didn't want her or her daughter, and she was not going to be my new mother, and I wanted my mother, not her. They tried to start family therapy with me, but after two sessions, the therapist asked to speak to them without me for several sessions, and I had individual therapy. Therapy helped them see that they wouldn't be able to recreate the family they should have had if they hadn't lost my mother and my stepsister's father. They actually listed and accepted this. It took toish years for everything to get better, but it did. My stepsister doesn't remember that time. She was only four when it stopped. I'll be honest, I don't find her easy to be around and I don't love her. I have a half-brother and half-sister who I do love, and they are my siblings, I would do anything for them. But my stepsister is very cold in certain ways and also very emotional in others. She is very dismissive of the grief I feel about losing my mother and has said some truly maddening things to me about my need to talk about my mother or visit her grave. She also likes to speak for me and say we both wouldn't change a thing about our family and feel everything worked out for the best. She's 17 now and I'm 21. Our half-siblings are 12 and 10. Two weekends ago my stepsister found out through a family member of her and stepmother's that I used to be against the marriage of my father and her mother and that I didn't want them. This relative told her everything. My stepsister was furious and that same day called and demanded an apology while she screamed down the phone at me. Then last weekend I was visiting and she demanded an apology again in front of our siblings. She said I should never have said those things, that she didn't miss her father so me missing my mother was no excuse, and I should have been glad, like she is, and she said I was weird and a female dog for not wanting her and her mother. She said I owed it to her to make it up to her and an apology was the start. 
Our siblings jumped in and told her they'd feel the same way I did, and my brother said she was acting crazy. I refused to apologize and she yelled at all of us. My stepmother was pissed and told me I could be a good sister and make it up to her by apologizing and showing I regret it and am glad she's part of my life. She went as far as saying refusing to apologize made me seem like a child still when I'm a grown woman now. My siblings told me my stepsister is still furious at us and has said a bunch of really ugly stuff about me losing my mother, which doesn't surprise me. Am I the jerk? 13 or 14 years ago, when my widowed father and widowed stepmother fell for each other, I was just a wee tot of six. By the time I was eight, they decided to make it official and tie the knot. My stepsister, who was two when we first met, officially became my stepsister at the ripe old age of four. Like many blended families, the initial transition wasn't exactly smooth sailing, and I threw a tantrum or two about the situation. I may have even told my dad to ditch my stepmom and made my feelings crystal clear to her as well, declaring that she wasn't going to replace my real mom. They attempted family therapy, but it quickly became apparent that some one-on-one -on -one sessions were in order for all parties involved. After some intensive therapy, my dad and stepmom came to understand that they couldn't simply recreate the family dynamic from before they lost my mom and my stepsister's dad. It took a couple of years, but things gradually improved. Fast forward to the present day, my stepsister, who was just a little tyke when I was struggling with the situation, has no recollection of those challenging times. However, the awkward truth remains. I don't have warm fuzzies for her like I do for my half-siblings, who I adore and would move mountains for. My stepsister, on the other hand, rubs me the wrong way with her aloof demeanor and unpredictable emotional outbursts. She dismisses my grief over losing my mom and has a knack for saying aggravating things about my need to talk about mom or visit her grave. To top it off, she has the audacity to speak on my behalf, claiming we're both content with how our family turned out, a sentiment I don't share. Now, at 21, I still find it hard to click with my 17-year-old stepsister. The tension boiled over recently when she discovered my past objections to our parents' marriage, courtesy of a nosy relative. Enraged, she demanded an apology through a fiery phone call and a dramatic confrontation in front of our younger siblings. She stood there, asserting that I had no right to feel the way I did about her mother and insisting that I should be grateful, just like she is. Her hurtful words pierced through me, and I found myself faced with the ultimatum of apologizing to make amends. My stepmother chimed in, echoing my stepsister's sentiments about the importance of an apology, mentioning that my refusal painted me as immature. My siblings, bless their hearts, rallied behind me, with my brother calling out my stepsister's outburst as unbridled madness. Despite the mounting pressure, I stood my ground and declined to apologize, much to the dismay of my fuming stepsister. So, dear Reddit community, am I in the wrong here? Am I the antagonist for not wanting to pay for my sibling's wig after I called them a bald-headed broke person? My 17-year-old male sister, 18-year-old female, decided to get a pixie cut. She had it for about two weeks now, and now she hates it. She came to me and told me that it's embarrassing my hair is longer than hers and she wants me to shave my head. I told her that I would not shave my head and that if she doesn't like how her hair is, she should just get a wig instead. She told me that she doesn't have money to buy a wig. I suggested she ask our parents to get her one, but she said she wasn't going to do that because they were the ones who advised her not to cut her hair in the first place, and it would be embarrassing to admit that they were right. She then again asked me to cut my hair, and I told her no. She got mad at me and said that no man actually cared about their hair, and if I wanted to be a girl so bad, I should just say that instead. This angered me, so I told her that it wasn't my fault she was struggling financially, and if she wanted to get a wig, she should get a job instead. She was not happy when I called her bald-headed and went to tell our parents. Our parents got mad at both of us for arguing, and then after they finished scolding us, my dad told me that he wants me to pay for my sister's wig. He said I had to pay for her wig because what I said to her was disrespectful. He acknowledged that what she said was wrong, but considered my response worse. I explained to him that I only said that because she kept antagonizing me. However, he insisted that my paying for the wig would be my punishment and he would think of something for her. I told him that I had been saving my money since I started working and I wasn't going to spend any of it on her. I informed my dad that if he takes money out of my account, I wouldn't speak to him until he puts everything back. I expressed concerns that my sister might choose the most expensive wig. My parents are upset with me because they believe I'm trying to evade accountability and find it unreasonable that I would attempt to punish them for that. I don't understand why they can't pay for it themselves. Well, it sounds like you and your sister are having a hairy situation over haircuts. On one hand, your sister's request for you to shave your head seems a bit extreme, especially if it's just to match her hair length. On the other hand, suggesting she get a wig instead of resolving the issue peacefully might have added fuel to the fire. It's understandable that your sister is feeling self-conscious about her haircut, but it's also important for her to communicate her feelings in a respectful way. Your dad's request for you to pay for the wig may seem like an added twist, but it could be his way of trying to teach you both a lesson about responsibility and consequences. While it's tricky to navigate these family dynamics, it might be worth having a calm and open conversation with your parents about finding a solution that works for everyone. And hey, who knows, 
maybe a family trip to the salon could help smooth things over in the end. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist in the description.